What is up, YouTubers? So I'm over here. Sorry, I didn't want to crawl down on the floor for the start of this video. But this is part two of the Miller Dial R250 video where I spent a bunch of money on this thing when I really don't need it and probably shouldn't have. So it's definitely shit I shouldn't have bought. But hey, I did. We learned how to refurbish or at least inspect a simple welder. That's all in the previous video. In this video, we're actually going to power this up, pray that it doesn't uh, blow up, and weld with it. So let's get into it. So in the previous video, I inspected the welder fully and fixed a bunch of issues, indefinite serious issues, and I think it's going to be all right. Time will tell on that when I power it up. But I got to looking at the stinger this came with, and well, it's a little bit worse for wear in case you can't tell. I always found it fascinating how somehow, because this, this welder came out of a high school or something years ago, I guess, but how people managed to like melt the jaws on these things. Now this damage might have just came from falling and being ran over by a truck, but that clearly got melted from use. So I don't know, maybe the kids in high school burn the rods down until they're all the way in the jaw and that's why. I always thought that was funny. But I picked up my favorite El Cheapo burger, burger, whatever it is, uh, Harbor Freight Special. Got it, eh, 12 bucks, I think, with a coupon, maybe even less than that. But this is my go-to put on everything. It works good. I like the way it feels in the hand. It's readily available and even better yet, cheap. So I'm going to swap that out here so it's a little bit safer and I don't accidentally become part of uh, the welding circuit. And then uh, I will get my generator fired up and we'll power this beast up. So as you can hear, I got the generator fired up. I have not flipped a switch on this. So <laughs> if this thing lets loose, you'll be the second to know, I guess, right after I realize it did. Now, my generator only has capability of about 30 to 35 amps of output. This thing uh, can draw upwards of 90 amps maxed out. Now, to help prevent the inrush from being any higher than it has to be, I have it on first gear, so 35 to 155 amps, where it appears to be using the smaller of the two transformers, which is good. So that should help the inrush a little bit. And then I am going to set the amperage, I don't know, to 50 amps. Not that it really is gonna make a difference, but uh, we'll see what happens. So let me power it up and see if it trips the breaker immediately or blows up. Well, would you look at that? Did not trip the breaker. All right, let's put it at welding amperage, 120 amps. So I got a piece of scrap right here. Got the machine set for 120 amps. We're going to run a 7018 pass and see what it looks like. Look at that. Killed the breaker out. <laughs> Not too unsurprising. At least I had a good run while I was going. That about figures. All right, let's regroup. So the welder is so inefficient and a power factor is so poor that despite not really consuming that much wattage in order to stick weld with at 120 amps it tripped the generator's breaker <laughs> at 120 amps now the rogue 200 i have i could output 200 amps on this generator no problem so that goes to show 
how much it matters what welder you're using on a generator. Now, interesting enough, the set point was 120 amps. It looks a little bit cold, and upon reviewing the footage, it was about 115 amps that it was actually running at. So not too surprising, a little bit cold on quarter inch plate. So in order to do a test weld, what I'm gonna do now is I drop down to 332, 70, 18. We're gonna run that at 90 amps. Hopefully the machine doesn't trip the breaker on a generator at 90 amps. That's what I'm talking about. Boy, that is a smooth arc. It's been a long time since I've ran on a Dial Arc 250. I've almost always ran the Ideal Arc 250, the big machines or a Lincoln like Precision TIG or whatever it's called, 275, 375. Those are the big machines I stick welded with. Man, that's a sweet running uh, machine. Let's clean that up and take a look at it. So I found it kind of funny. I put it a bit over 95 amps, and then, of course, the output, had I left it at 90, would have been dead on. That's just the nature of these welders. They're plus or minus 5, 10 amps on a set point. The Ideal Art 250 Lincolns are even worse because those, you're really guessing what the set point is. But it uh, welds great. Unfortunately, as we learned, the power consumption of it is astronomically high and a lot of that has to do with the fact that it does not have power factor correction capacitors in it this model was available the one that i have was available with that as an option but this machine doesn't have it so the downside to that is is that it's going to end up loading the power wire with a, a lot of amperage due to poor power factor and essentially it's going to end up tripping the breaker despite actually not consuming that much power. And that's just the nature of them, which is why if you're running on a generator and you're attempting to use a purely transformer based machine, you are going to be in a world of hurt to try and get any output. I mean, I'm running on a 7600 running watt generator, 9500 starting watt, and it couldn't even handle 120 amp output on the machine. The most you'd probably get is about 100 amps, which is what I got. So you'd be able to run a 332 on it, uh, 7018. Uh, you'd also be able to run a 332 6010, but there'd be no hope of running an eighth inch 6010 because the voltage is simply too high. But yeah, it's real smooth, crispy running. I like the way it runs. I mean, these old machines like this, there's really nothing wrong with them other than the fact that they're so power hungry that you really have to have a pretty big service to it, 50 amp minimum, which uh, is kind of going to be interesting for me because I'm on more limited generator power, but I have a solution to that pretty soon. Hopefully, I, I don't know, I'm working on trying to find a commercial building to take over and run a uh, shop and it's I don't know it's gonna hopefully start picking up soon there just isn't anything available uh, around me for sale within an hour that meets my needs so we'll we'll see where that goes